shall we start? Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Today we have Manjil Saiki, Cardiff University, and he will be talking on refined enumeration of symmetric classes of alternating sign matrices. So over to you, Manjil. Uh, thank you so much, Anurag. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity and also for organizing a very nice uh, seminar series. Um, so uh, I'm going to speak about uh, uh, alternating sign matrices and uh, some counting problems associated with alternating sign matrices. Um, so uh, please feel free to uh, interrupt me at any time and ask any questions you might have. Um, this will be a, a very introductory type of uh, Talk. I hope that this will be an introductory type of talk. Um, so let me start with this sequence of numbers. So one, one, uh, two, seven, and so on. And the sequence uh, in the in this uh, that you can see in the title is given by a very nice formula, uh, which is a product of uh, factorials. A, a uh, um, so uh, the numerator and denominator are both products of factorials uh, involving uh, n. And so what do I mean by a nice formula? A nice in the sense uh, that a combinatorialist likes. Um, and for me, a nice formula would be something like this, where you can write it as a, um, as a product of factorials or sums of products of factorials and so on. Where uh, if, you, if you look at a very small example, if you look at the, the, the numbers that are displayed in the title, you can see that the prime factors are very small uh, in, in all of these cases. So something like that would be uh, considered to be nice uh, in the sense of a combinatorialist. Uh, this can also be written in the product notation in, in a compact way, uh, as you can see in the screen. So this formula was conjectured by uh, Mills, Robbins, and Ramsey to count what are called alternating sign matrices. And alternating sign matrix of uh, size m or order m is an n times n square matrix with entries in the set uh, 0, 1, and minus 1, which uh, satisfies certain conditions. The first is that all row and column sums are equal to one. Uh, and the non-zero entries, they alternate in each uh, row and column. And uh, if, you, if you look at the conditions, as well as the entry set, you'll see that uh, all permutation matrices are alternating sign matrices because uh, the entries are only zero, one, and all row and column sums are equal to one. Since there are no, uh, uh, no minus ones appearing, so this condition is anyway satisfied for a uh, permutation matrix. So all permutation matrices are also alternating sign matrices. Uh, for instance, there are seven alternating sign matrices of order three. Uh, and these are the six permutation matrices. Um, and the seven matrix is the following matrix where there is a minus one in, in the middle. So you can see that the second condition is satisfied. If you look, um, if you look from the top of the second column or the second, uh, if you look from the left to right of the second row, you will see that uh, the non-zero entries, they alternate in each row in sign. So if, if the first one is a one, then the second non-zero entry has to be a minus one, and then the third non-zero entry has to be a one. So there, for bigger matrices, there can be a bunch of zeros in between the one and minus one. Uh, since this is a small matrix, so this is the only possibility. Okay. Um, so the ASM conjecture, uh, that is the product formula that was shown in the first slide was uh, proved by uh, Doron Zeilberger and independently by Greg Cooperberg using, using different uh, techniques. Uh, in fact, Zeilberger, he proved a stronger statement using constant term identities, uh, while Cooperberg, he exploited a connection with uh, certain models from statistical mechanics. So if there is time, I'll show uh, the, the connection uh, at the end, but if there is no time, then uh, I have to skip that part. Um, so uh, let us go, let us now see that how, how they were first defined these alternating sign matrices. Um, so <clears throat> for, a, for a given matrix A, uh, I denote by A uh, superscript I and subscript J to be the matrix that, that remains when I remove the ith row and the jth column of A. And if we remove more than one column or row, then we add to the subscripts and the superscripts. So then uh, a very famous result of uh, Denonio and Jacobi uh, states that if, uh, if we want to find the determinant of an n times n matrix, we can actually write the determinant in terms of uh, some, in terms of smaller, smaller determinants, in terms of matrices of 
uh, in terms of determinants of matrices of smaller size. So this can be written in the following way. So the determinant of A is actually, uh, it, it can be written uh, as, uh, as a two times two determinant of smaller matrices, smaller determinants inside this matrix. So you can see that uh, one row and one column are deleted from each of the entries here. So one, one, that means that the first row and the first column are deleted from the matrix A. And one, uh, it means that the nth, uh, nth row and the uh, first column are deleted and so on. And uh, in the denominator here, you can see that I have, I have deleted two matrices, uh, two, two rows and two columns. So for this to work, this has to be non-zero, obviously. Um, and uh, this gives a way actually to write uh, determinants uh, in terms of two cross two, two matrices, actually. So bigger determinants in terms of smaller matrices. So for instance, uh, uh, Charles Dodson, who is better known as Lewis Carroll, he used uh, this... Uh, theorem to give an algorithm for evaluating determinants in terms of two times two determinants. So uh, we can write this uh, three cross three determinant uh, in terms of uh, the two cross two determinants. So this is a direct application of the previous result. Now, if we go one step further, uh, we can write a four times four determinant in terms of uh, three times three determinant. And uh, here the coefficient would be now a one over two times two determinant. So uh, everything inside uh, for a four times four determinant would be uh, determinants of three cross three matrices, three times three matrices. And uh, using this, uh, what you see in, the, in this slide, we can write those uh, three times three determinants in terms of smaller determinants like I have written here. So uh, you can keep on doing this, uh, doing this iteration and eventually you could write uh, you could write everything in terms of two times two determinants. But the caveat is that uh, there has to be some things non-zero. So I'm not going to go into too much details uh, for this uh, algorithm, but I, I just want to show that uh, it is possible to write uh, certain n cross m matrices in terms of smaller determinants. So uh, uh, Robbins and Ramsey, they looked at a generalization of these two times two determinant, which they call the lambda determinant. And they define the lambda determinant in the following way. So uh, the lambda determinant of a two times two matrix is, uh, it looks like the normal determinant, but instead of a minus one here, we have a plus lambda. Okay. So this was the definition of the uh, two, uh, two times two lambda determinant. And now using the previous observation that you could write uh, bigger determinants in terms of smaller and smaller determinants, they generalize this. So you just replace everywhere uh, where, where, a lambda, where a determinant appears, you just replace it by a lambda determinant. And you can write uh, the lambda determinant of bigger matrices in terms of the smaller two times two lambda determinant. So uh, the main result of uh, Robinson Ramsey in this direction was the following. Uh, they wanted to find a formula for the determinant of, uh, uh, of a matrix, the lambda determinant of a matrix. So A is an n cross n matrix with entries A, I, J. And uh, here the, the set uh, uh, script A, N is the set of all ASMs. Uh, I, B is the inversion number of B, B is an ASM here. And N, B is the number of minus one. So then the lambda determinant of A, uh, it can be written as a sum over all alternating sign matrices of order M actually. Uh, and if you put uh, lam lambda equal to minus one, then you can see that this, uh, uh, this specializes to the normal determinant. Um, so uh, this was the first appearance of an ASM in the literature. Um, and uh, uh, they were obviously interested in, because the number of permutation matrices is given by a very simple formula. So they were obviously interested in finding the number of alternating sign matrices, uh, these matrices. And uh, using computer experiments, they conjectured the formula that was shown in the first slide. And it took about uh, 15 years uh, for, for the conjecture to be proven. So uh, I, here the, uh, we have something called the inversion number. So probably everyone knows uh, the inversion number of a permutation, but uh, what's the inversion number for an alternating sign matrix? So this is not important for what comes later, but just for the sake of, uh, uh, sake of completion, so I just mentioned. Uh, an easy way to calculate the inversion number is to take products of all entries, all pairs of entries for which uh, one of them lies to the right uh, and above the other, and then adding them up. So you go to the to the right and above, to the right and above. For each of these non-zero entries, you do this. For zero entries, it, it does not matter because the product will be zero. And if you do this, then there will be seven pairs here whose product would be plus one and two pairs whose product would be minus one. 
Uh, that means you have uh, plus seven and minus two. So this gives an inversion number of five for this matrix. So here you see a bigger alternating sign matrix and uh, uh, and you can see that uh, between a one and a minus one, there can be zeros as well. Okay. So uh, all this is fine, but uh, from this, how does one get a, uh, can conjecture a formula for, for the alternating sign matrix? Um, so first let us have some observations. Uh, and the first and the very important observation is that there can be only one uh, one in the top row or the first column. And by symmetry also, uh, because uh, this is a square matrix, so by symmetry also in the last row and the last column as well. So why can there be only one one in the top row? Um, suppose, uh, suppose in the top row there appears a minus one. Suppose here there is a minus one uh, in the top row. Then if we look uh, at this column from the top of this column where there is a minus one, you'll see that the next uh, non-zero entry has to be a one. And uh, the row sum until that would be, uh, sorry, the column sum until that would be zero. Uh, then after this one, the next uh, non-zero entry has to be a minus one. And if you, if you calculate the column sum up to that uh, occurrence of minus one, you'll see that the column sum is minus one. So the column sum alternates in this case between uh, zero and minus one. And if there is a minus one, it means that the column sum of that uh, of that column can never be one. Uh, and this was the condition that uh, the, this was the first condition of an alternate sign matrix that all row and column sum has to be one. So there cannot be a minus one actually in the first uh, first row. Um, and and uh, by symmetry also in the first column, the last row and the last column as well. So the only non-zero entry, there has to be a one because the row sum has to be one. So the only no entry, non-zero non entry has to be a one somewhere in this uh, first row, okay? So this observation is important for what follows in, in, in the rest of the talk. So let us denote by a sub n k, uh, the number of n times n ASMs with a one at the top of the kth column. So here this, uh, this matrix would be, uh, would be a, an element of the set. Uh, I mean, okay, so this is not a set, but it would be counted by uh, a four three because the first uh, because the non-zero entry in the first row is at the third column. So this will be counted by the number a four three because this is an order four ASM. And uh, some thought will give you that uh, there is a symmetry, which uh, there is an inherent symmetry in these numbers a and k, and this is because uh, if you flip uh, an alternating sign matrix uh, along its uh, vertical axis, then it is still an alternating sign matrix. So this is the symmetry uh, symmetry of the of the alternating sign matrix. And uh, further, if uh, if you if you have the first one in the first uh, column, uh, the for the the one in the top row at the first column, then you see that. Uh, all of these entries has to be zero because uh, there cannot be a minus one in the first row. And also there cannot be a minus one in the first column. So everything below this one has to be zeros. So you can actually, uh, what you get here would be a smaller alternating sign matrix. You can remove this uh, row and column to get a smaller alternating sign matrix here, which would be one, one order less than the one that you begin with. So this is uh, the observation here that is being written. Uh, so A N one is equal to a n n is equal to a n minus one where a, a n is the number of a n n times n alternative sign matrix. So uh, these observations, they allow one to check uh, small values to get a formula and Mills, Robbins and Ramsey, they did exactly that. So they first conjectured uh, that, um, that the ratio of uh, the successive numbers a n k are uh, given in terms of a nice uh, rational function uh, of k and n. Uh, so this was the first conjecture. And uh, this means that uh, these a and k's are uniquely determined by the smaller a and k's, k minus ones or k minus i's in this case, uh, when k is greater than one. And if k is equal to one, then uh, I have already mentioned that a n one is just a n minus one. So uh, you can write this as a sum over all. A n minus one k's. Uh, so this sum works because uh, the only possibilities for the k is from one to n minus one. So if you sum over all these possibilities, you just get the numbers a n minus one, um, which is a n one. Okay. So uh, this was the crucial observation that uh, they are uniquely determined by the smaller numbers. And uh, from here, they reformulated the conjecture. So a n k 
they reformulate it uh, as the following uh, product notation. So you can see, if you remember from the first slide, uh, this uh, product which appears here is uh, similar to the number of alternating sign matrices. So the only difference between this product and the formula for the n, n order alternating sign matrices is that instead of n minus two, we had n minus one there. And from here, knowing that an is equal to an plus one one allows one to conjecture that uh, enumeration formula that I showed uh, in the first slide, very first slide. So um, I'll, I'll mention this later, but this this conjecture was uh, proven by Doron Zeilberger uh, after the ASM conjecture. So first he uh, first he proved the ASM enumeration formula, and then uh, later on, I think two years later or three years later, he proved uh, this formula. So the sequence uh, that I showed uh, you in the beginning is actually counts uh, several combinatorial objects, not only alternating sign matrices. And uh, some of them are so alternating sign matrices I've already mentioned. Uh, some certain classes of descending plane partitions are also counted by uh, this formula. Uh, then some totally symmetric self complementary plane partitions are also counted by, by the same formula. Uh, so the, I am not explaining what are plane partitions or descending plane partitions and so on, because this is not uh, important for the rest of the talk. But if there are some questions at the end, then I can explain a bit. Uh, something also called the alternating sign, made, the sign triangles are counted by these, uh, uh, by, these uh, by, the, by the same formula. And these are very uh, new objects uh, only recently. Uh, recently they were studied about three years back. Um, and uh, there are some some more uh, which I don't mention. Uh, so for those, uh, there are some easy bijections between alternating sign matrices and uh, some some other objects which are not written in this slide. So um, one of the major open problems in enumerative combinatorics is actually to find bijections between the uh, objects that I listed in the last slide. Uh, recently, uh, Fisher and Convalinka uh, they have given a uh, bijection, a sidejection of the descending plane partition and alternating sign matrix part. So it appeared very recently. Uh, so a, a version of this uh, of their uh, of their paper explaining the sidejection without uh, proofs appeared in uh, the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences recently, and it's a quite readable account of of the bijection. So if you're interested, you could uh, take a look at at this paper. Um, but but the rest of the uh, objects they, there is no bijection. So Fisher and Convalinka they say that uh, they can do probably the same thing for totally symmetric comp self complementary plane partitions as well, which is uh, supposed to come out uh, later in their work. Anyway, but uh, the uh, but what I want to stress is that uh, there are no uh, very there are no easy bijections that are known between uh, these objects. So, uh, so these four objects that I have listed here. Uh, already the bijection of Fisher and Convalinka is very complicated. So uh, does the story end here? Obviously no, because I still have so much time left in my talk. Um, and uh, what happened was in the, in, in, in the late 1980s, Richard Stanley, he suggested the study of various symmetric classes of ASM. So since the ASM is a square matrix, so it inherently has the symmetry of the dihedral group. And you could actually ask questions about the various symmetry classes that, uh, that of the ASMs. And uh, this suggestion led uh, uh, Robbins to conjecture formula for many of these uh, classes, enumeration formula for many of these classes. And it turned out to be as difficult as enumerating ASMs. So I already mentioned that the ASM formula took about 15 years to be proven. Uh, these conjectures of Robbins took even uh, more time. And uh, the study was only recently completed in 2016, where uh, Fisher, Convalinka, and Behren, they found a uh, they found the enumeration formula for the last uh, case, which was remaining for uh, among the conjecture formulas of Robbins. Um, so let me just uh, tell, uh, give the symmetry classes for which uh, things are known. So uh, you, you, one would have a vertically symmetric ASM. So this only appears for occurs for odd order ASMs, and the formula for this was uh, proved by Greg Cooperberg in a very famous. Annals paper uh, of 2002, where he not only proved this, but he proved many other results. Uh, 
so half turn symmetric asms they can occur for both odd and even order and uh, the odd order was proven by Razumov stroganov and the even order was uh, done by Cooperberg in the same paper so for diagonally symmetric asms there is no nice formula in the sense that i mentioned that it's not a product of factorials or sums of products of factorials or so on but uh, there exists a, a sort of a formula for diagonally symmetric asms uh, this is uh, um, so this, this was done recently by Fisher, Behrend, and Kuchan. So if you go to Christoph Kuchan's website, you can find some slides where he gives the formula. Um, uh, for quadratic symmetric ASMs, uh, for odd order, it was done by Razumov and Stroganov, and for even order, again, by Cooperberg in the same paper. Um, for horizontally and vertically symmetric ASMs, again, these occur for odd order. I'll explain why uh, vertically symmetric ASMs occur for odd order. So this was done by Professor Soichi Okada, who is in the call uh, uh, in 2004. And uh, diagonally and anti-diagonally symmetric ASMs was the last case, uh, which was done by Behrend Fisher and Konvalinka uh, in 2017. So there is also a totally symmetric case. And again, there is no nice formula known. Uh, but there, there is a formula for the number of uh, enumer uh, for the number conjecture at least formula for the enumeration formula for totally symmetric ASMs, and this appeared recently in in some work by Hagendorf, about one month back, I think, uh, where he studies this from a physics perspective, and it appears as a conjecture from some of the work that he did. Anyway, um, so these are the symmetric classes of ASMs, and uh, I'm going to speak uh, about some refined enumeration of these symmetric classes in, in the remainder of the talk. So uh, this is a good place to stop and see if there are any questions regarding the definition or, I mean, any of the things that I mentioned. Um, I, mean, I cannot see the chat, so Anurag, if there are any questions, please let me know. There are, there are no questions yet. So. Okay. Anyway, so uh, I mean, it, it's nice to also stop in between and look at lovely pictures. Uh, let's move on. Um, so uh, let let us go to the to the main part uh, of the talk. Uh, these uh, that is on the refined enumeration of ASMs. So there are some observations that are in order. The first observation I have already mentioned that there is only one one in any boundary row column of an ASM. And this I've already explained. Uh, so this suggests the question, how many ASMs with the position of the one fixed at a certain row or column exist, right? So you could fix the position of the one in the first row and ask how many ASMs with the fixed position of the one exist. And I already showed you a formula uh, for that, uh, so these these type of formulas are called refined enumeration of ASMs. So refined in terms of the statistic, the position of the one in in the boundary rows and column. Um, so I already showed you uh, this conjectured formula, which I said was proven by uh, Zeilberger. So this was uh, already conjectured by Robbins, and was proven by Zeilberger in 1996. Uh, and Zeilberger used uh, the techniques that were used by Cooperberg to prove the ASM conjecture. Uh, so, since then, uh, several people have worked on the refined enumeration of ASMs as well as uh, their symmetric classes. And some of these are listed here. So, Baron Fisher, Romik, uh, Surazumov Stroganov, uh, Arvind Dyer, and so on. Um, um, so, uh, several conjectures on refined enumerations of ASMs existed. Uh, for example, Fisher had a conjecture uh, for the number of vertically symmetric ASMs with the position of the ones in the second row fixed. Uh, then Robbins had conjectured formulas for refined uh, enumeration of quadratic symmetric ASMs. So these was, these were uh, the these were not very difficult conjectures. Uh, and then Duchamp had a conjectured formula for the enumeration of something called quasi quadratic symmetric ASMs. Uh, so we proved uh, these conjectures and more in joint work with Ilse Fisher and uh, in some uh, more recent work, uh, there are some results, more, more results, which are in progress. Uh, um, so I'll, I'll show one or two of that new results, but uh, yeah, let's see. So uh, let us go to the vertically symmetric ASM case. Um, so there are some observations that we can make. 
Um, the first is that they exist only for odd order. And this is not very difficult to see because if a vertically symmetric ASM should have existed for even order, then the vertical symmetry um, axis would be in between uh, two columns, say these two columns, there the vertical symmetry axis would be here. And uh, because they are vertically symmetric, so uh, all of the entries that appears to the left of the vertical ex symmetry axis would be the same as the entries that appear to the right. So that means the sum of all the entries in, in any row would be divisible by two. But uh, but uh, for an alternating sign matrix, the row sum has to be one. So the vertical symmetry axis cannot be in between two columns. So that is why they exist only for odd order. And uh, once you once you fix the vertical symmetry axis in the first row, uh, everything to the left of that axis would be zero. To the right of that axis would be zero. Only the entry that 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 is in the column of the uh, or that is in the middle column would be a one. Otherwise, the vertical symmetry condition would be uh, would not be satisfied. Once you fix the one in the first uh, row in the middle, then uh, in the second row uh, directly below the one, there can only appear a minus one. Again, this is not difficult to see because if there would have been a one here, then there would have to be a minus one uh, somewhere uh, to the left and as well as to the right. But uh, that minus one then has to sit. Uh, below is zero because uh, all of these uh, entries in the first row are zeros. So, uh, so if you if you go back to the observation that uh, I, the justification of the observation uh, for the boundary rows or columns to have a one, uh, it did not work because uh, the top non-zero entry uh, of that column was a minus one. So the same thing would be uh, would happen here. Uh, so there cannot be a one here. So there cannot be a zero because if there is a zero, uh, then to satisfy the vertical symmetry, there again has to be a minus one because a one has to appear somewhere. Uh, so there has to be a minus one again because of the vertical symmetry. So the only possibility is that the entry is a minus one. And once you fix this, you can keep on doing this for the rest of the entries in the middle column. And you'll see that the middle column is always uh, alternating between one minus one, one minus one. Uh, and it ends with a one because uh, it is an odd order alternative sign matrix. So uh, the, sec the second row has exactly two, two ones uh, for a vertically symmetric alternative sign matrix. And we can ask a refined enumeration with respect to the position of the one in the second row because in the first row for all of these vertically symmetric ASMs, the one is fixed in the middle, uh, in the middle of the uh, of the row, so it makes no sense to ask. Uh, it's it's a trivial uh, question for the first row, but uh, for the second row, uh, you can ask that how many uh, vertically symmetric alternating sign matrices exist with the position of the ones fixed in the second row. In fact, you could ask the same question for the first row as well. So, how many vertically symmetric ASMs exist uh, where the position of the one is fixed uh, in the first row? And uh, this was already done by Razumovic Stroganov, who had a formula for the number of vertically symmetric ASMs with a fixed one in the first column. And uh, th this, this formula was something like this. So, uh, so uh, this number I have denoted by A, B, C, 2N plus 1I. And you'll see that this appears in several formulas later on, this number. Um, so I have already mentioned that Ilse Fischer had conjectured uh, the number of uh, 2n plus 1 order vertically symmetric ASMs, where the first one in the second row is in the ith column. And she conjectured that it is equal to uh, a very simple product from of this type. So uh, this was Fischer's conjecture. And uh, we managed to prove Fischer's conjecture last year. So the number of... 2n plus 1 uh, order vertically symmetric ASM with a 1 in the first, in the ith position in the second row is given by uh, this formula, which was conjectured by Fisher. And you can see that you could write this actually as a uh, sum of two, uh, two AVC numbers. So AVC 2n plus 1 i was uh, the refined enumeration number with respect to the column for the vertically symmetric alternating sign matrix case. So this, this is uh, this number, which was proven by Razumov and Stroganov. Um, so our proofs are not combinatorial. So it would be nice to have a uh, combinatorial explanation of this result, why, why, uh, why this is true, basically. 
Okay. Um, so what about other symmetry classes? I have shown you several symmetry class and you could ask the same question for all of these symmetry classes basically. Uh, and we have formulas for many of the symmetry classes as well as some other type of ASMs which are not, not exactly symmetric class, but you impose certain other conditions on a symmetry class to get these type of matrices. And in some cases, the results are in terms of generating functions where uh, one side is explicitly known and the other side you can just compare coefficients and then get, get uh, the missing entries. So I, I'll show you an example of that. Uh, so let's look at a vertically and horizontally symmetric ASM. So for the moment, you can ignore the red color. Um, I should change this, but uh, anyway, so you can ignore the red color. So imagine that everything is blue. Um, so since this is vertically symmetric, uh, so uh, the observation for vertically symmetric ASMs are also applicable here. The middle column would be something like this, one minus one, one minus one, and so on. Uh, and the top row would be something like this, where the one would be in the middle and they exist only for odd order. And because they are horizontally symmetric, uh, so the horizontal symmetry axis has to be again in the middle uh, middle row, uh, and again, it is, this, it is it is same for the horizontal symmetric case. The uh, I mean the justification. So for 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 this case, the uh, middle row has to be one minus one, one minus one, and so on. So a vertically and horizontally symmetric matrix looks something like this, where uh, the middle column as well as the middle middle row are uh, has entries alternating between one and minus one only. And uh, again, it makes no sense to ask a refined enumeration question for this with respect to the first row or the first column, because it is always fixed. The position of the one is always fixed in the middle uh, of the first row and the first column. But uh, you could ask the same question like we did for vertically symmetric alternating sign matrices, that how many uh, vertically and horizontally symmetric alternating sign matrices exist where the position of the one in the second row are fixed or the second column are fixed. So this would be the same number because uh, of this uh, symmetry, but you could ask this question for the second row. Uh, like in the vertical vertically symmetric case, uh, we would have two ones which are arranged symmetrically uh, with respect to the minus ones here. So uh, you can ask the same question basically. And this is what we did. And uh, if we denote these numbers, so AVH 4N plus 3I denotes the number of vertically and horizontally symmetric ASMs of order 4N plus 3 with the first occurrence of a one in the second row to be in the ith column. So the I is counting, the I is keeping track of the position of the one in the second column. Um, then, uh, the following is satisfied. So we get a we get a sort of like a generating function for these numbers, AVH 4N plus 3. So if you look at the right side, uh, you'll see that uh, I have these AVH numbers appearing on the right side. And on the left side, I have something, I have something which is already known. Uh, so AVC uh, 2N plus 1I were the refined enumeration numbers for uh, the vertically symmetric alternating sign matrices. Um, and this was, and this number is already known from the work of Razumov and Stroganov. Uh, I have something called QNI, which I can explicitly uh, calculate. Um, it comes from some, uh, it, it actually comes from, um, from uh, symplectic group characters, but uh, you could write the symplectic character in terms of uh, laws and styling of uh, certain hexagonal reasons. And from that, uh, so from this weighted laws and styling, you could find out the QNI numbers. So this, this, this we have found out. Uh, this we already know from Razumov and Stroganov. So everything on the left hand side is explicitly known. So if you just compare the coefficients uh, with uh, with the left hand side and the right hand side, you could actually read off the numbers AVH four n plus three i. So uh, the starting values are zero. Uh, you also need some starting values. So the starting values are zero. For example, uh, a one cannot appear here. So the number of uh, vertically and horizontally symmetric ASMs with the position of the one in the second row fixed at the first column would be zero. So the starting value would be zero here. And this actually allows us to, to work with this. Okay. So you'll notice that this is only for four n plus three, order four n plus three, but I said that they exist for all, all, all odd order. So a similar formula, it also exists for order 4n plus one. So there is a difference between how, how you count the, the alternating sign matrices, the vertically and horizontally symmetric alternating sign matrices for orders 4n plus one and 4n plus three. Uh, 
and because of that we have two different uh, results for uh, these two orders so uh, this number i have already shown a, a v c 2 n plus 1 i and the q n i which appears uh, on the on the right hand side of this formula this looks like this uh, so q n i is explicitly known uh, it's it's a, it's a sum now of uh, some Pokhammer symbols. So this is the Pokhammer symbol order rising factorial, this notation. I'm sorry, I did not write it. Excuse me, can yes. I interrupt you? So yes. one page back, you yes. put a small Q. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so one page the small back, you Q, can yes. find some small Q appears in, in the portal. Yes. Uh, so the small Q is a sixth root of unity. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so, uh, and uh, I mean, if you expand this, then uh, they disappear actually. Okay, I see, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, so, yes. <clears throat> so this QNI is, uh, this QNI is given in terms of this formula. Um, and uh, we can we can do the same thing for several symmetric classes. Actually, we can either find a generating function of the type that I showed you earlier, or we can find explicit counting formulas for other symmetric classes or related ASMs. So let me show you a related uh, alternating sign matrix. So these are called vertically and horizontally perverse alternating sign matrices. And uh, you can see that this is now no longer a square matrix. So uh, I think it has 11 uh, columns and nine rows, if I'm not wrong. Yes, nine rows and 11 columns. Um, and you can see that the middle entry is now uh, something like a star. I have not written anything here. So uh, a vertically and horizontally perverse ASM is, is actually an, a, a matrix of size, uh, uh, of size uh, 4n plus 3 times 4n plus 1. Um, and the entries are in the set 0, 1, minus 1, except the middle entry. Uh, and they satisfy all the conditions of a vertical, uh, of a alternating sign matrix, uh, as well as a vertically and horizontally symmetric alternating sign matrix, except the middle entry. So the middle entry, if you read from the top of the column, then the middle entry is read as a 1. But if you read from the left to right of this middle row, then the middle entry is read as a minus one. So that is the only condition, uh, only different condition, as well as the, the difference between an alternative sign matrix and a perverse alternative sign matrix is that um, the rows and columns are now different in numbers. So there are two more columns uh, than rows. Uh, because of the horizontal and vertical symmetry, uh, you could ask the same question like we did that how many of these exist uh, if we fix the position of the one in the second row. Now, since the number of columns and the number of rows are different, uh, it also makes sense to ask the same question if for for the uh, for the column. So you could ask how many uh, vertically and horizontally perverse ASM exists uh, where you fix the entries in the second column, the ones in the second column. So uh, there are two now refined enumeration formulas that you could ask for for the vertically and horizontally perverse ASM case, and uh, the formulas are given by uh, simple sums of uh, numbers uh, in terms of AVC. So these are the Razumov Stroganov numbers, which again appear here. So this says that uh, the number of, uh, so, okay, so I did not mention that uh, such a vertical and horizontally perverse ASM would be said to be of order 4n plus 2 if the number of columns is 4n plus 3 and the number of rows is 4n plus 1. So we take the middle number. So the number of order 4n plus 2 vertically and horizontally perverse ASM with the leftmost occurrence of 1 in the second row, this is now refinement with respect to the second row, is given by a, a sum of numbers in terms of the ABC numbers. And similarly, uh, if we ask the refined enumeration question for the column, then we get a similar type of formula. Um, yeah, so the only difference is in the in this term. So here we had i minus 3 minus k, and here we have i minus 1 minus k. And uh, from, the, from, this, uh, from these uh, results, you could also see that the row refinement number for the vertically and horizontally perverse uh, ASM can be written in terms of the column refinement numbers. Um, yeah, so where these are the row refinement numbers, where you have R, and for a C, you have the column refinement number. OK. 
Okay. Um, so uh, we go to now a different class of uh, alternating sign matrix. So since I have five more minutes, so let me very quickly go go through uh, the rest of the things. Um, and uh, an odd order alternating sign matrix, uh, which is symmetric with respect to the reflection along the diagonal and the anti-diagonal, uh, is called a off-diagonal and uh, is called a uh, diagonal and off uh, anti-diagonal symmetric. But if the entries along the diagonal and the anti-diagonal are all zeros except the central entry, which is a mi minus one to the power n, then we say that this matrix is off-diagonally and off-anti-diagonally symmetric. So this is an example. Now you can see that, uh, you can see from the red color actually, that if you reflect along, along this uh, axis, this matrix is symmetric. If you reflect along this uh, anti-diagonal, then again, this matrix is symmetric. So basically, if we look at only the uh, red colored entries, we can actually uh, read of the entire matrix. So if we reflect this red entry here, we can read uh, what is here. Again, one more reflection would give you what is in the bottom and so on. So uh, we have a refined enumeration result similar to the vertically and horizontally symmetric case for this off diagonally and off anti diagonally symmetric ASMs as well. And from our result, uh, the following uh, two very simple relations between the vertically and horizontally symmetric refinement and the off diagonally and off anti diagonally refinement. Uh, comes out. So this this is similar to to the if you remember uh, this is similar to the relation between the vertically symmetric alternating matrices with respect to the column and the row, where I said that uh, we our proofs were not bijective. So this is similar to to the, those results. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have similar results for vertically and off diagonally symmetric ASMs. So I forgot to mention this uh, before. So vertically and off diagonally symmetric ASMs are special classes of totally symmetric ASMs. And uh, these were enumerated by Professor Okada in the same paper that I alluded to before. Uh, we also have something called quarter turn symmetric ASM. So these are, as the name suggests, that these are ASMs which are symmetric with respect to a 90 degree rotation. And we have generating function formulas for the refined enumeration of quarter turn symmetric ASMs as well. So if you look at the uh, right hand side, then you will see that these A and I numbers are already known. I have shown you. These AHT numbers are also known. And you could actually compare coefficients between the both sides and read off the AQT. So AQT are the refined enumeration numbers for quarter turn symmetric ASMs. So this was A and I, which I showed you, and it still looks something like this. It is a bit more complicated than A and I, but it is still explicitly known uh, from work of Razumov and Stroganov. Um, let me skip the quasi quarter turn symmetric case. So, I mean, these are again, uh, we also have a uh, generating function formula for the refined enumeration of quasi quarter turn symmetric ASMs. Uh, let's go to half turn symmetric ASM. So, uh, so far I have only shown you a single refinement. That means I'm asking you questions where, um, uh, where I asked that how many ASMs occur where I fix the first row or the first column uh, only. But uh, you could ask actually by fixing more than the first row or the first column. For example, for alternating sign matrices, you can fix the position of the one in all the four boundary rows and then ask how many ASMs exist for that fixed uh, position of the ones. And we, we have results of that type. So uh, I have already mentioned that, for example, uh, Behrend has a uh, generating function uh, for all of these four row refinement uh, for ASMs. Uh, for some of the symmetric classes, it makes sense to ask for, for further uh, restriction on more than one row or more column. And one of these is the half turn symmetric ASM. So the ASMs that are invariant under 180 degree rotation are called half turn symmetric ASMs, and they exist for both odd and even order. And the refinement uh, with respect to the position of the one in the first row was already done by Razumov and Stroganov. But uh, here one could ask for doubly refined enumeration of half turn symmetric ASMs with respect to the position of the ones in the first row and first column. And uh, recently we found a generating function for these uh, refined enumeration numbers. Uh, where uh, entries on one side are explicitly known and you could read off the entries on the other side by just comparing the coefficients. And uh, I think now this would be a good time to stop uh, because uh, I have 45 minutes and I think I'm already over. So let me just, uh, let me just go to this slide so that we have sort of like a 
overview. So thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, Manjit, for the wonderful talk. So do we have any questions? Oh, so there's something in the chat. Let's check. So there's a question in the chat. Uh, are all ASMs invertible? Mm. Well, uh, so yeah, I get questions like this. I mean, so for me, uh, I'm not studying these ASMs uh, from a linear algebra perspective. This is only a purely combinatorial, uh, combinatorial, uh, what do I say? The motivation for me to study. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't think that all are invertible, but I, I would not know for sure. Uh, this this uh, this is Soma Sundaram. Yes, from America. Uh, is there any relation between this graph orientation and this ASM? I understand that there are some. Yes. Uh, there's yes. some graph orientations on that. Yes. Uh, so there, uh, there is studied studied the uh, different orientations of the graph. That's called signed graph. Also, the similar logic. Yes, uh, so there is a connection between uh, orientations on graphs and ASMs, uh, and one of well, uh, one connection that I have is a is a bijection between ASMs and something called six vertex model. So the six vertex model is uh, something like this. It's a it's a grid graph uh, where you have uh, n rows and n uh, n vertical lines and n horizontal lines. It's basically okay. a grid, and then you put an orientation on each of the edges. So for example, every degree four vertex here uh, has uh, two edges coming in. So you can see that this is coming in, this is coming in. Okay, okay, okay. So these uh, these type of configurations are in bijection with alternate sign matrices. It is not a very difficult bijection. Okay. So all the formulas that I showed you actually exploits this bijection and we use this graph and related graphs for symmetric classes to, to prove the results that I've shown. But this determined value, that this value, Will it reflect anything on any parameter on the graphs or? Uh, yeah. So, for example, the refined enumeration numbers, uh, you could actually write in terms of the what are called the uh, partition function of these graphs. Okay. Uh, if you if you put everything, so for example, I you can see that these are their xi's written on the uh, horizontal line and yi's written on the vertical line. So okay. you can actually put a weight on each of the vertex. Okay. I have uh, something on that. So, for example, uh, yeah, let's see. Yes, so we can assign each each vertex a weight, WV. Okay. And uh, the weight of the whole configuration or the state would now be a product of all the weights of these uh, vertices. Right. Then the generating function is now the sum over all of these configurations, the weights of these configurations. Okay. So okay. if we specialize this generating function, we can actually get enumeration results. For example, okay. for refined enumeration results, uh, we specialize everything to one except one. So okay. either this parameter or this parameter we don't specialize. Okay, and okay. One. okay. I have one more question. Yes. And this ASM generally uh, 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 discussed through determined. Do you have any any results on ASM with the permanent? Um, yeah. So, uh, well, uh, I mean, I'm not sure, not directly, but. For example, uh, Professor Okada's paper, which I mentioned uh, several times in the talk, he has uh, he has uh, some results, I think, on permanence. Uh, of uh, of ASM. Permanence and so on. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Ah. okay yeah. Nice, thank you. Do we have any more questions? So, yeah. If we don't have in that case, let's thank our speaker and mute also friend. Yes. Thank you, Manjil, for the wonderful talk. Uh, the slide, uh, slides and the video will be available for in our, on our web page for the later use. If you want to go back and check anything, you can just download it from there. Okay. Yes. So the next week we have talk from Ishita Mazumdar from IIC, ISI Bangalore. So thank you for joining us today. That's all. Ah, nice. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm ending the meeting for the call. Thank you, Manjil. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yes, it was